Good afternoon, everyone. So nice to be with y'all. Could I have a little more house lights out there so I could see everybody? Because it's important. Thank you for being here. This is how we make progress. Um, the forum was established three years ago, as you all know, I believe, in the aftermath of the terrible tragedy at Mother Emanuel AME Church. And um, we're proud at the city of Charleston to have been a founding sponsor of the forum. And uh, I'm a founding member of the forum myself, personally. Um, and share the goal of combating hate and prejudice in our city, in our society, in our world, and securing a just and, and prosperous future for our citizens, all of our citizens, all of our citizens. And, and this is not, it came to, a, 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 to all of our attention so poignantly after the tragedy, but y'all, it's just the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do given the history of our country, our original sin of slavery and racism and civil war and Jim Crow that all occurred right here in Charleston. So I say it's kind of ironic, maybe in a way, that uh, we're poised at this special place to be a leader, a light for um, the world. We can do that, of, of dispelling prejudice and, and combating hate and prejudice in our society. So um, we've had a lot of conversations about this topic over the years, and uh, you know, I, I think it's really meaningful today that we, we, we have these presentations about well, what, what are we doing about it, even little things. So I wanted to share with you briefly some things that the city of Charleston has been, become engaged in, and I've got four quick topics. One is to examine potentials for racial disparities. Uh, secondly, to promote reconciliation uh, across differences uh, to, thirdly, to increase youth engagement, education, and employment opportunities, and four, to enhance economic development and affordable housing. So, um, you know about a year ago, um, City Council passed a resolution denouncing and apologizing the wrongs committed against African Americans by the city of Charleston. Um, and, and so, and, and some council members actually voted against it because they, they said, well, it's all talk, you know, we're not doing anything. But in fact, the resolution said that we would promote in all city undertakings tolerance and understanding and encourage others to treat all persons with respect and to eliminate prejudice, that we would urge all businesses and institutions, organizations doing business or having activities in Charleston to strive for racial equality and work equity in wages, health care, housing, and all aspects in the lives of African Americans in our community, and that we would seek to promote racial harmony and acceptance by way of initiatives such as the creation of an office of uh, racial reconciliation. So um, we have done just that. We, um, it's within our legal department, although this new employee will be working side by side with our minority business leader. And I interviewed our top candidate last week. I can't announce the name yet because we're just offering the position to her. But she'll be starting uh, next month. And uh, it will be um, uh, a position that will uh, be responsible primarily for the administration of city's uh, non-discrimination ordinances and policies, uh, compliance with federal and state statutes on non-discrimination, equal opportunity, fair housing, as well as in assistance to internal and external uh, organizations for diversity and racial uh, reconciliation. But we're looking forward um, to this new person coming on next, next month. Uh, she's going to be terrific. Um, so I guess I gave that away. So, um, so when that their publication came out last year by the Avery Institute, the Disparities Report, uh, Mike Wack on our staff convened 13 um, um, uh, kind of mid-level managers in city government to look through all the aspects that we might identify um, uh, better practices for the city of, uh, 
of Charleston. And they came up with a report uh, that includes an, a number of recommendations and our new uh, manager of diversity and racial reconciliation will be um, putting those into practice. So um, in addition, Ruth Jordan, I, I don't know if y'all know Ruth, she's our uh, uh, manager of women and minority business enterprise program at the city of Charleston. And uh, she's a very dynamic leader. She just started about a year ago. And so here's the thing. The program has been in existence for a while, which is great. And it just kind of tracked how much uh, business, uh, when, when the city built a building, even like the African American Museum, how much uh, of the contract was, was being done by minority contractors. And that's a good thing to do. But we're drilling down now to promote uh, minority businesses throughout the region. And we formed uh, a, a Minority Business Enterprise Advisory Committee. They just uh, uh, met for the first time last month. It includes people like um, uh, Joan Robinson Berry from Boeing and other business leaders in, in, uh, in the community. Because here's the thing, this can't just be on the back of city government or county government. They do have a minority uh, business program too and, and a few other governmental agencies. We need to spread this message to the business and, and general public at large that uh, be intentional about your purchases to do business with women and minority owned businesses in our community. And uh, uh, both the city and the county are developed uh, uh, lists of who these businesses are and who who you could do business with. So so we're trying to spread this word so that it, that it's it, it it's a community wide type of thing. And so this um, committee is going to be engaged in that, along with exploring the many opportunities we think will come from the building of the International African. Uh, muse African American Museum here in Charleston, which finally, I know we've talked about it for a while, uh, in July's city council meeting, we plan to take the construction contract uh, to city council for approval, finally, after getting the cost down. And um, thank you. And we had to raise about an extra uh, 12 or $15 million given cost cost today in the construction world. But uh, we'll be breaking ground this year for sure. And uh, I'm so excited about it. It's going to be great. And, and it's really, y'all, going to be a great opportunity for minority businesses in our community. So another thing, just to let y'all know of, um, we started our first ever City of Charleston Employee Pride Alliance of city employees to be a resource group dedicated to creating and sustaining a positive work environment for all individuals, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression. And in fact, um, I didn't know this before I became mayor, but there's this like national ratings group called the Human Rights Campaign, and they rate all the things that you do as a city uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, anti-discriminatory practices and so forth. And uh, believe it or not, we went from kind of the low end of the scale to having the highest score in the, um, in the state of South Carolina over just the last three years with all the policies that we've uh, instituted. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. So uh, I, pro I probably need to move along because I'll take too much time. Um, I did want to mention in addition to those things that um, late last year, we were the first city to pass a hate uh, crime bill in the city of Charleston. We're the first uh, municipality in the state of South Carolina to do that. So, um, you know, when Dylan Roof um, committed those terrible murders, um, executions, um, it, it, it was also a hate crime. And now, even though our jurisdiction is for th uh, misdemeanors, but even to write a hate-inspired graffiti on, on a wall in the city of Charleston would now be applicable to our hate crime uh, bill. So uh, that's, that's, um, that's a good thing. So promoting reconciliation across differences. Uh, I don't know if y'all know this, but we, Mike Wack uh, has helped me organize uh, interfaith uh, uh, clergy council. It includes pastors from all denominations and faiths, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, uh, Hindu. It's, it's really an amazing group of uh, pastors and, and faith leaders in our community. And uh, we meet quarterly and discuss issues and we get together. You know, we after the um, um, 
Well, we've done this from time to time. We had a, a vigil, Marion Square, after the terrible tragedy in Pittsburgh at a, at a Jewish synagogue, and we had another gathering after the terrible Muslim murders in, in, in New Zealand. And, and Imam Shamu said, Mayor, you know, it just seems like when, when we really get these diverse groups together, it's, it's always in the wake of a tragedy. Let's get together when there's not a tragedy. So we started doing that, and we, we have these interfaith gatherings, not because we're bemoaning some terrible tragedy in the world, but just because it's the right thing to do, and we get to know each other and get to work on things in the community. For example, our next meeting this coming Thursday is at the city's uh, navigation center. If y'all hadn't heard about that, it's really incredible. Up at 529 Meeting Street, I know you know about the homeless shelter that 180 Place runs, but we we now have a day center to assist those who are experiencing homelessness in our community. And there's resources there. Thank you very much. It's really a beautiful asset. There's resources there for uh, job placement, for housing opportunities, for mental health services, for me regular medical services, all under one roof. And uh, the city of Charleston helped provide this space, and we've got community partners that are making this happen. And so we need volunteers and help. And so all this, these interfaith uh, group is coming together to help us do that. It's, it's really an amazing effort. And it's part of our Homeless to Hope effort that uh, really originated after I became mayor when we had so many folks living homeless un in Tent City underneath the, um, uh, underneath the highways. It's really a continuation of that effort. So third, increasing youth engagement, education, and employment opportunities. For the first year, we have the mayoral fellows. Are y'all out there? Where are my mayoral fellows? Y'all stand and be recognized. These young men and women, wow. These are the leaders of tomorrow, y'all. Uh, they're an amazing group of high school and college uh, young men and women who will be our future leaders. This is the first ever Mayoral Fellows Institute. Uh, they will be working with uh, city government for the next uh, six weeks in all aspects of city government and, and additional lectures. And thanks to the uh, uh, generosity of uh, J Gerald and uh, Cheryl Canard and the Ackerman Foundation for helping fund this. So um, amazing leadership development right here before our eyes. In addition to that, uh, last January at the Martin Luther King breakfast, I issued a challenge to our business community to hire more youth this summer. I had a goal of 1,000. We only met 700 new jobs for kids this summer, but 25 businesses have participated and we've hired 700 kids with summer employment this summer. And um, I thought that was a really nice thing. So um, finally, I, I, I did want to touch briefly on affordable housing. It's a crisis in our city and it impacts uh, disparities up and down uh, the economic uh, earnings uh, landscape, so to speak. Um, I'm really proud to announce to y'all, folks, that we have cobbled together. Doing affordable housing, y'all, is all about helping subsidize it because it's just, it's costly. And no one in the private sector is just willing to, you know, give out free rent and reduce rent and not make a profit. And so government has to partner with so many people in, in any way it can to help provide more affordable housing. And between the $20 million bond uh, referendum that our citizens passed, and, um, and we've been working on the projects that that'll go into, and a settlement that we just reached two weeks ago with the local development corporation. We have now $39.6 million to invest in affordable housing, which will create hundreds of units in our community. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, the settlement with uh, the local uh, development corporation, they're gonna write us a check of $10 million uh, within the next couple of weeks and then create a 9.2 million revolving loan fund that will be used for affordable housing in our community. So for example, uh, y'all, I mentioned 180 place a minute ago, they are going to build 72 units 
for very low income. It's like transitional housing for those who have been experiencing homelessness. It's going to be right up at 573 Meeting Street, right in front of uh, the homeless shelter, and we'll provide that uh, kind of transitional step where, where folks can, can get a home, get a roof over their, their heads, and, and get a new start in life. So that's one of the um, uh, investments we'll be making and we'll be partnering with West Ashley, a, a dogwood development for 75 units for sale. We've started construction on the Grace Homes with our partner Charleston Housing Authority and um, it's right on Lee Street up the street here. It'll be 65 units and we opened Williams Terrace about a year ago over on uh, Anson Street. That was about 45 units. So together with all the things um, uh, other developments that we'll be partnering with. Again, our goal is to create, in, in pretty short order, about 800 units of affordable housing, and I, that'll be a great boost for our community. So once again, thank you uh, for being here, because at the end of the day, we, all, we try to do all this stuff, um, the, the folks you're hearing from today at all levels of government, but I, I believe it, the, at the end of the day, it's about you being engaged, and not only knowing what's going on, but but pushing us, making us accountable, and, um, and being a part of the solution so that we do, as a community, combat hate and prejudice, as I said, and make sure that we secure a just and equitable, prosperous future, an opportunity for all of our citizens, including these future leaders of tomorrow. Thank you very much.